Revolution people, this is Brother Leonard, the Truth Seeker, and I'm coming to you with a few minutes of truth, and I do promise just a few minutes of truth. I came across a video in my news feed today that I want to put up here on the channel, and it's of a preacher basically upset at the NFL players for not um, standing for the national anthem. Now, um, the preacher's name is Donnie Swaggart. Yes. Swaggart sounds familiar to you because, yes, that is the son of Jimmy Swaggart. Now, I've never heard him preach before. Be honest with you, I never knew he had a son, but this video came up and it got me to thinking about these um, preachers, you know, telling folk uh, how they're mad and upset with um, NFL players for not standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I do have my own commentary. If you were following me on my personal page uh, when this thing was hot and heavy. I have my own opinions on the players um, having, you know, st kneeling uh, for the national anthem and most of y'all will know that I'm in favor of all forms of protest. Revolution. <laughs> okay. I'm for, I'm for whatever you're going, if you're going to protest, I'm for your protest, period. I am for all protests. If you're going to sit up there and do and do a protest, I'm for your right to protest, plain and simple. I may not agree with your protest, but sometimes, hey, I'm with you. For instance, I believe in Colin Kaepernick's view to protest. I just don't think the boycott in the NFL is going to solve the problem or solve the issue. That's that's where I'm at with it, you know. And, and if you choose to not watch football, that's fine. But what he said was kind of interesting because it, it points to the racism that has permeated, that is basically the foundation of the evangelical church. Evangelical Christianity, by nature to me, is just, you know, just as racist as they want to be. And whenever I see a white man sit up there and tell basically black folk you should be grateful for the money that you were given as if those athletes were just allowed to make money that they were just you know just just we really want you to be poor but we favored you to me that racism just is is just terrible and that's what he says the history of the evangelical church is a very racist history very racist and one of these days we go we can go through you can look it up yourself but we can go through the history of the evangelical church and the reason why um, you know different instances of like for instance the church that he came out of the assemblies of God church actually was founded uh, the assemblies of God church was actually founded by Charles H Mason a black man uh, who started the Church of God in Christ after the Azusa Street um, the Azusa Street revival? Okay, but because when they went back to start the churches, a black man was the head of the church. The white folk in the church decided that they did not want to be a part of the black man's church, so they went and started their own Pentecostal movement called the Assemblies of God. Have you ever noticed something too? And I'm, 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 I'm almost done. I'm almost done. And you'll see this because in the video, the woman uh, makes mention of the, how the choir mainly is black, is mainly black women sitting up here cheering uh, for, uh, you know, cheering for uh, Donnie as he's uh, preaching. But have you ever noticed that uh, when it comes to our churches, you'll find that if there's a racially mixed church, that nine times out of ten that racially mixed church is headed by a white man hmm now there are some instances uh, where there are racially mixed churches that are hit but racially mixed to me means that if you have say a hundred members and I'm just using this as a number racially mixed church means that um, that you will have at least, I would say, a third of the church being of a different race than the pastor. 
at least a third okay but when you look at a lot of these churches you know I find it interesting um, pastors like um, like we see Jimmy Swagger good example Donnie Swagger better just a good example here Rod Parsley um, uh, Mark Sharona uh, let's think uh, Jim Baker when he was preaching but there's a lot of these um, um, what you call it uh, what's this uh, you know duty Bob uh, Kenny dude Kenny Copeland all these guys sitting up there with these racial uh, Jesse Duplantis oh yeah sitting up here making money off of black folk Donnie Swagger sitting up here making money off of black folk because the folk up there in this in this choir of black folk singing the folk folk happy so that they can make the money and get those offerings they making the money off the black folk but then he has a problem with these ungrateful black folk you know basically I sit on my um, on one of my social media feeds um, on my Facebook feed uh, to be more precise about when you hear a man a uh, man who is who says when all this stuff was going on that these ungrateful black athletes when they start off with the comment these ungrateful black athletes just know that they are jealous white men who want their money Donnie Swagger just by the mere mention of this you are jealous of the fact that those black athletes that are kneeling have more power prestige fame and money than you and that's what you want but you sitting up here trying to act like you want to be a man of God don't give me that you need to check your racism bruh check your racism sir all right well that's it um here's the clip behind me and just like how I typically do here you go people revolution And these idiot black people in the back standing up clapping at the pulpit. Are we idiots now because we don't want to get shot and killed by the police? So that means we can't get shot. And the root of that protest, oh, I shouldn't go here, but I am. The root of that protest is that. Wait, wait. And they're protesting over something, and, and what they don't understand is, you know, if, if we're so bad, why don't they move to North Korea?